Hi, welcome to Wet Pixel Live. My name's Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of Wet Pixel, and I'm joined by Ken and Kim McKeefer from uh, from the States. Hi, guys. Hello. It's great to see you. Um, so, um, obviously, um, Ken and Kim are a couple, um, and as such, people always say that the key to successful relationship is communication, but these guys kind of take it to the extreme because they go underwater and take pictures. Um, so their communication has got to be pretty good. So, so I figured we could all learn a little bit about communication from these guys. So how do you guys communicate when you shoot underwater? I would say it starts, it starts when you come up with the shoot, coming up to make sure we're on the same page with everything. Mm. And communicating with the safety team and everything that's going on. But underwater, you know, you've got your basic scuba signals. You've also got a certain finger if something's not working that you can show and clearly gets the point that no, we're not doing that. Yeah. And uh, if Kimber wants air, if she can go through the entire process of how we do if we're breathing up the tank. Yeah, I mean, if we go somewhere remotely and do a shoot, we sit down the night before the shoot, discuss everything thoroughly. They're right. with the safeties right. with everybody that's going on. How, because um, they know the area, they know the animals. Typically, um, we get all the information we can from them and suggestions. Um, just because we have experience in it, we still listen to other people that have knowledge of the area, locations, of things like that. Um, when you do these remote shoots, I mean, you need a boat, you need people, you need tanks, you need weights. It's it's a very in depth thing. And uh, you know it takes all yeah communication. No, I'm saying uh, talk about the communication. Oh yeah, part. so we we sit down the night before and really talk about you know how to ask for air, um, you know how repeat that like if he's liking something because you know when you're when you're modeling you don't know exactly what he's seeing you know the vibe sometimes so if he's liking something he gives you a signal to let you know let's keep doing it because. As a photographer and model, you got to do it a lot of times to get everything perfect. Yep. Facial expressions, um, especially with animals. Right. You, if the animal's not in the shot, or yep. if her hair's not going the right way, or she blinked during the best shot, or the dress didn't go the right way, there's a lot of things. So we, we do a lot of repeat. When she needs air, she's always she's like this. When um, Before, with what she works out with the safety divers, the safety divers on the side with the tank, Kimber's in her, whatever she's wearing, dress, swimsuit, whatever. Safety diver comes up. Kimber will hold her mask squished against her face while she's getting her breath. She, she does three. She's like one, deep breath, two, deep breath, three, deep breath. Then the safety diver takes her mask and her regulator swims out of the way. And we go over which direction to swim out of the way. And we can later, we can go over what, like the scenario and the logistics. But she's, Kimber says this for air before she really needs yeah, it. Yeah, I tell them the night before, I'm going to ask for air before I even feel any kind of urge. So yep. I never test my limits. I never go to a point, because I know they need time to swim to me. And yeah. that's where sometimes, you know, we have to arrange where the safety can get out of the shot. I mean, you can Photoshop them out, but we do try to just get them out of the shot, because that's a lot of work for the photographer. Um, and of course, the safety is producing bubbles as well. So you've, you've got to keep yeah. try and keep their yes. bubbles out of the shot as well. So yeah. And you've got to keep them from stirring up the bottom. Or yeah. yeah. They, you know, you, you go fast, but don't stir anything up. <laughs> Yeah. So, Kim, just just to, uh, you mentioned. So, you just hold the mask on your face. You don't actually put the strap on, then. No, not on and off like that. Yeah. Okay. Just, that's the thing too. That I, I I model a little bit. Don't hold my breath to the, as long as I can. Get some air, and I want to see his feedback. I want to know what if everything's working for him, or if he's like, you know, this isn't. Working. I tell her her hair needs to. Yeah. You know, she needs to fluff her hair, or the current's pushing it the wrong way. We may change the angle. Yeah. Uh, Tell her no, that's not working. Whatever the look or something. Yeah. And uh, the it, you've got to be really clear with the air signal. On our, yeah. The last time we were down, our friend Mel, she, she did it so smooth and gracefully that you didn't know. No one knew she wanted air. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh. it's like it's our eyes, and I'm like, hey. <laughs> like a real distinct, and you know everything else needs to stop, and you right. just need to wait on your air. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, I, so so uh, you mentioned so it's worth possibly mentioning a little bit how you set this up. So so first of all, you will get obviously into your outfit, Kimber. Ken, you're then underwater. Are you then? Would you normally be underwater? Would Kimber come down and join you, or would you go down together? We usually go down together, and she'll she'll with her dress and stuff. She'll have a BC. She'll put her mask on and then, and we swim down. 
I think I sent you a video, I'm not sure, but it, it had kind of a take yep. the gear off and move over like a behind the scene. Right. So it's just one down with BC fins, mass. We'll, we'll weight everything and we'll stick it to the side. And then Kimber will go on to the spare air or a second tank, depending on what we have set up. Sometimes right. we'll have a tank with like a 15 foot hose. And that's right. what they're using to bring. It just depends on what we have. So to touch on this a little bit, I typically go down in my own gear. For one, when you're breathing like that, modeling, uh, you go through a lot of air. And sure. You're, breathing, you're using the safety to air. You, that tank will get sucked out real quick. So I, And I prefer to go down in my own gear. I have more control. I think it's safer. Um, if it's shallow, 20 feet, I have done that once just to kind of go down with somebody and have a long tube of, of a tank. Uh, but of course, I just think having your own gear, you never know what's going to go on down there and to have your own gear to put on. So usually I'll put on my own gear. Everybody puts on gear, gets down to their spot. Um, last time we did the modeling in Skalak, it was nice because they do side mount. So they had a lot of air. A lot of air and a lot of control and they can stay, they can stay inches from the sand. And they can kick backwards because they're used to cave diving. Yeah, yeah. They can get out of the way without disturbing anything. So that was, yeah, yeah. That was a great plus. for that type of model. So that's, that's quite so. So safety divers then. So you normally have one safety diver or more than one safety diver. How does that work then? Depends on what we're doing. Um, if we're, for instance, if we're doing shark, there's somebody that's that's got the bait that is yeah. controlling kind of where. So sometimes I'll, I'll I'll be like, I need more sharks, and they'll they'll have to move the bait in yeah. to the to the uh, currents or where we're, you know, move the bait, move the shark, and keep an eye on the sharks if they're getting a little too aggressive or something like that. And so then we'll have them, a shark shark wrangler, we'll have a specific safety diver for Kimber. If there's yeah. more, fine, but if there's one that is dedicated 100% to her, that's all we need. Usually you have one dedicated just to watching you. So Unless you. we did a shoot where somebody was going from one point to another and the current was so strong, the safety diver wouldn't be able to, so we had a safety diver at the beginning point, safety diver at the end point. And I'm always along as a third. I've always got a spare, you know, in, in case I need to assist. Uh, do you have a safety diver, Ken? I don't. Right. And, uh, I, there's, a, uh, there's a, sometimes with the crocodiles, we'll have two safety, just watching my back. You know, yeah. Sure yeah, yeah. Along, no other animals, right? And, there's, and when, when we do crocs, for instance, there are, there are two surface safety guys on top watching to make sure that nothing, because they're coming out of a lagoon, yeah. and you don't want an unexpected visitor yeah. at any at any angle. No, and, no. And so there's there's a whole lot there. On a normal dive, if there's not any kind of apex predators or anything, then one safety diver for Kimber, is, we, it's not a problem. And so, so Kimber, returning to this sort of modeling process for a minute, how, how do you deal with your eyes then? I mean, salt water, you, you mentioned it briefly. What, what's your kind of technique for dealing with, well, stuff sitting in your eyes, basically? Yeah, it, I mean, it, you're going to get water up your sinuses, which that's another thing people ask. Yeah. I mean, it burns, but I've done saline rinses to kind of get used to that sensation of it being in your sinuses. Um, you, you don't know how you're going to react. That's why even if you were going to go do a remote shoot, it'd probably be good to get in the ocean somewhere shallow and kind of see what that feels like because you don't want to be 60 feet and that'd be something. It does burn your eyes. Like last time with Mel, like she's like, my eyes, my eyes. And it, sometimes it just takes you like a minute and they'll adjust to it. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it does burn. It's it's not pretty. Modeling is never pretty even on the land. It's hard work. It's arching. It's bending. It's posing. It's your hair you know there's a lot that goes into it it's uh, not pretty it's cold <laughs> well i was going to mention cold but but the, i mean the other thing is obviously the poses that you get underwater so so are you constantly moving pose or are you holding a pose while while ken shoots or how does that work how does how does the posing thing work i mean that's the cool thing about underwater modeling typically it is a flow thing you get to flow you get to move and just get in all these different poses but um when you're around sharks or Crocodiles, you can't do that. So you sure. do have to adjust. You, you limit your movement with, with some of the animals, some of the predators. And um, one of the things, the reason that we like the flowy movement, and because something new may pop up, a pose may pop up, hey, you know, can you do that again, do that movement? And uh, one of yeah. the things we're trying to create with our images is movement in a still picture. We're trying to create the illusion of movement and the, the dynamic energy. Yep. in a lot of the cases, and, yep. um, and adapting is a huge part of it, because 
everything's different. But getting back to the with the water in the eyes and the sinuses, she she just works at it. None of this was natural to her. The water burns. She had she found a way to get over it. She's able to convey that to clients and other people, and which is great. The sinuses. Yeah. Yeah, water goes up your nose, and if you've never experienced that, you'll panic. You can't try that. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, <laughs> you've got to be familiar with the feeling, and the uh, and, and it just it's just something you have to touch, like the cold. And I we've been at dinner before, and forty minutes after a shoot, and water drain out of her. Yeah, like you'll bend over, and it's like coming out of your sinuses. But the Sonoke days are probably the easiest on your eyes and your sinuses. Honestly. Yeah, it's yeah. cold though. That's the downfall. It's fresh water. It's easy to do your buoyancy. It's great. It does not burn your eyes and sinuses at all. And it's beautiful. And, but it is, it yeah. is cold. <laughs> it's cold. So, so you mentioned us. So you mentioned in, a, in our previous episode, Ken, that you you dress in a similar way to the models. We, didn't, we won't say the same way again. We're not going to fall, fall into that trap. Um, <laughs> but the um, but the so so how. What do you do when you get cold, Kimber? Do you just get out? How does how does that work? Is it just you know you, you go till you're cold, you're out, or I guess that, I guess it must work like that. But yeah, that's tricky. Like last time we went to the snow days with Mel, it was a rainy day, so there was no sunshine. And I mean, right when you get in, you're freezing, and then if you get out for five minutes, like getting back in, it's like the whole counted to like fifty before she could get back in. It's just like, but I mean, you just have to do shorter modeling if everybody's freezing because. Um, it just gets uncomfortable. The, the coldest water we shot in, um, Kimber got in a dress in the cage at Great White. Oh, yeah. And, uh, okay. It was brutal cold. So I just went in in board shorts, and everyone was taking bets on how long we'd stay in. I mean, minutes, that was cold. Minutes. Yeah, it was like we 10 went, minutes. We did 45 minutes. Did we? Well, <laughs> a, combination, a combination of we were doing the modeling, and then all of a sudden, three Great Whites started a whole lot of activity to that. Maybe incentive to stay. Yeah, sometimes I don't enjoy the cold. I'm not a cold person at all, so that is something I do have to battle because I, I want it. You know. I, I yeah I, I couldn't cope. I'm not a cold person either, and yeah I definitely yeah. I, I couldn't even the board shorts thing. It's just no, I'm, <laughs> it's put me right off. <laughs> it's, it's mental. It's like even trying yeah. to get in. It's like it's at your knees. You're like I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. <laughs> yeah, but I, I do. So I just do it. You're both much tougher than me. Um, Ken, I'm just going to circle back to something you mentioned before, that you mentioned that obviously you, this, this concept of capturing movement in the ocean, capturing Kimber's, Kimber's movement in the ocean. Um, so when you're shooting that, are you, how do you, are you, are you just spraying and praying or are you managing peak of the action? How do you, presumably, can you predict what it's going to look like? How do you, how do you know when to press the shutter basically? Or is it just how it looks? Well, we have a, it's a lot of, it's all of those things. It's a, we have a concept okay. in mind. And so we think of this would look good based on, like I said, we only, we only do stuff that we, with animals where we know before. We don't ever just first time yeah. jump in and take a wing at it. So we kind of know the sun, we kind of know the sea. You get under, you see with the visibility, which way the rays are coming and how the animals are reacting. And then you adapt. A whole lot of this is about adaptability. Yep. Yeah. Because you can't get a specific look in your mind and then just cry when that can't work. Of course, yeah. Because yeah. all of a sudden it's a cloudy, rainy day. Yeah, and yeah, you're yeah. picturing sunbeams. So you just make the best of whatever situation. Yeah. And so we'll go down and I'll take a couple test pictures before I'll just swim down real fast and I'll, I'll kind of see how the light's reacting. How, and I'll, then I'll, I'll say, well, this is my ideal spot here. Then we get between Kimber and the safety diver we set a final location because sometimes, <laughs> or we're talking about communication again, I'll say, I really want this shot. Kimber says, no, the safety diver can't see me. And we have to get those thoughts across to each other because the safety diver has to have a direct line of sight and be close. They could be directly over my head. Yeah. They could be, and sometimes the current won't allow that. Sometimes yep. we shot on a ship where at 90 feet, Ripping current, and there was only there was one spot where you could get behind the mast and get out of the current. So Kimber had that spot. Safety diver, their bubbles are in the shot. Nothing you can do about it. And I had to just swim against the current and do a drift shot, one shot. Right, right, right. Yeah. Drift shot, <laughs> and that's what I had to do. Yeah, so yeah. You just have to. And so the safety diver is the first concern, and then after that we work with angles and stuff. And what I like to do. 
I'd like to present a wider view, and so I start wide because she's got air, safety divers there, and I start a little bit back. And then I swim toward and then decide if I want to kind of cut right or left or up. And I work so that as she's near in the end of her breath hole, I'm close as an additional safety factor. And so, okay, that's probably it's probably a good place. So you mentioned you start wide. So so are you shooting with a zoom lens then? What sort of what sort of lens setup are you using with this? But uh, most often with models, I'm shooting an 11 to 24 Canon. Right. But but I most of the time use my fins for zoom. So okay. I back yeah. up. Okay. And because I want an overall perspective, maybe the whole ship, or maybe just a whole lot of water with a tiny model. And so I want a variety. I don't want the same shot over and over. I want to put some variety. And, I, and sometimes, sometimes, even though underwater you don't generally shoot down, sometimes that angle works for a yep. shot or two. Yeah, yeah. So I like to I like to swim from different angles. The uh, eleven twenty four or fisheye. Pretty much my go-to's. I'll, I'll sometimes use sixteen thirty-five, but the eleven twenty-four just I just have a better feel for it now. Yeah, yeah. Super wide aspect, especially yeah. if the visibility is not great. You want to get it the less water between you, as you know, yeah. the, the more clarity you can pull off. Yeah. And uh, luckily, I'm, I'm an ambassador for Lightlight, and Lightlight has the best customer service I've ever dealt with in any yeah. aspect: cars, homes. They they're willing to work. And, if I, if something if I need something and they don't have it, they'll work to get it or find a way around it. They're, they're really lovely people. It's great to have a relationship like that. So yeah, it makes a big difference. Absolutely. Yeah, they work together to get feedback. Like if he's coming up with something new, John at Icobike, he prototypes it to him, and he gets specific feedback to perfect that to yeah. someone in the field. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty so cool. It's a win-win, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But to so, touch on that. Oh. Go on, go on, no, go, go, go ahead, Kim. Sorry. I sort of got stuff. Oh, the thing with us working together that I know he's super adaptable, and us working with Mother Nature, like we don't have control over the weather, the currents. The I know that he can get something, so that helps too because it's sometimes it's something quick and we don't have great conditions. But he'll think of something different, like um, shooting yeah. differently to just create a different look. Yeah, yeah. instead of being bummed and sometimes we only get the one shot to do it most of the time so it's yeah, not yeah. like we sit there for but three days waiting for good weather you kind of only need the one that's the yeah, it's, if you get the one shot you're okay yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's the thing too when you're shooting is you don't need 50 shots that have the same look like you don't yeah. you need one or two really good shots so yeah. it's like do your stuff and move on you know and, let, yeah. and then he'll tell me nope we got that one let's do something else so you know that's part of communication too is sure. but his adaptability is I know that he can adapt, and I think adaptability in life in general and definitely underwater is huge. Yep. On that, so. I cool. sent you a good example of adapting. There's a picture of Kimber with hammerhead. Right. And we normally, you get 18 feet of water, crystal clear, blue, bimini water. Bimini, that's yeah. What yeah. I, that's what I was picturing. Well, it was a super stormy day, and it was really horrible visibility, silty. Yeah. And so I came up with a dreamy type idea. I told her what we were going for, and we got a good dreamy look out of it. Yep. Instead of just crying and going back to the hotel. Kind of a defocused look as opposed to a super sharp look. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I mean, I, that, I think that that the sort of flexibility to be able to adapt is crucial for all underwater photography, really. But um, yeah, yeah. Um, that that's really good, guys. Thank you very much. Um, um, I'm sure we'll be doing another episode soon. So um, I look forward to chatting to you again soon. Um, and thank you very much. If they want to see more of your work, guys, where can people see more of your work? Uh, our Instagram is the most frequent, and we post a lot of stuff on WebPixel on Facebook. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where, where's, um, where's, what's your Instagram handle or name or whatever it's called? Mine is Ken underline Kiefer underline underwater. Kimber Kiefer, at Kimber Kiefer. Okay, cool. So just one word, Kimber, yeah? Yes. Cool, excellent. Well, um, I really recommend that um, if you get the chance, go and look at these guys' work on, on Instagram or yeah, on the WebPixel Facebook groups. Good place. To, there's lots of really good stuff on there. Um, so, but yeah, please go and take a look at it. It's, it's stunning. Um, and I'd like to thank um, 
Silly Bags Underwater for sponsoring this episode. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank you all for watching. And um, I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please give it a like. Um, and feel free to add any comments, suggestions to the comment section below. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.